There are some artists who are household names, and Lucian Freud is one of the quintessential household names in terms of figure painters. His studio assistant wrote a biography about him recently, and that's where I learned how to say his name, Lucian. And he's one of those artists who other artists talk about a lot. And he's one of the artists that I admire um, and whose art I refer to. And, you know, I would love to buy it. I can't afford it. So this, these are some of the things that you should know about him as an artist. Probably the most important thing about Freud's work is that it looks beautiful and would feel beautiful if you were able to touch it. So let's start with how it looks and its texture. In terms of how they look, the first thing that appeals to most people is the form. He paints in a very realistic way. However, he distorts the anatomy a little bit. And these distortions in Freud's paintings, some people find them a little bit disturbing. I find them really beautiful. Um, in some instances, he exaggerates the features in the face, uh, especially in women, uh, to a grotesque level. It's almost like finding something um, creepy or grotesque uh, and ugly, and it becomes beautiful, sort of like goth rockers sometimes. Uh, for example, um, there are some photographers from the, the WPA, one of them, Dorothea Lang. If you look at her photos, the people are worn out, they're ugly, but they're also beautiful, and the photos are kind of caricatures of these people. The way in which she rendered them and took the photos of them, and even how she developed the photographs with these shades of gray and the black and white photography, it really makes them very beautiful to us. So I guess you could say the same is true about Freud's work. He exaggerates stuff like eyes, and he gets into the anatomy, the bony protuberances of the knees, as well as the ribs and legs. Um, sometimes he paints almost disgusting, overweight people. His drawing is uh, sort of caricatured. It's an exaggeration, and it's a little bit, um, frightening in the same way that we kind of enjoy horror movies or gothic novels, but it's also beautiful in that way, too. Some people like creepy. The other thing he kind of experiments with, but is also a little bit um, creepy, is his skin tone and its color. It's kind of funny, but the skin tone in Freud's painting feel an awful lot like how color in some of the English movies look when they're portraying how gray it is in England. Um, even the warmer tones that Freud depicts in the flesh tones, he sort of inserts complementary colors like gray or blue, in, especially in the shadows. He takes the oranges down a notch, and so they're not as orange or pink as, as realistic as some other painters, for instance, John Singer Sargent. Some of the flesh tones even look a little bit green or sick, and I think he might have been using some burnt umber and some black. I haven't really researched his palette, but I know he used something called Kremnitz White. Um, and the flesh in Freud's versions of skin color look a little dead, zombie-like, but they do appeal to us in the same way we kind of get into zombie flesh in movies and in television shows, I guess. So. It makes them a little bit challenging to look at. I don't think that most people would find these figures a uh, focus of erotic attention, but I do think that most people would find them kind of interesting in a way. For me, <laughs> I, I wish I could touch these paintings. The first time I saw them, uh, it was all about the texture and how thick the paint was. One of my friends described that he uses, um, and it's in a couple of books, that he uses bristle brushes. He uses very thick paint, impostos. He lays the paint on layer after layer. He works obsessively week after week, and he builds up the surfaces of the paintings. And sometimes the painting, the paint itself is an inch thick. Um, 
if you probably picked up one of these uh, paintings, it would feel very heavy. Uh, you, the canvases, I'm sure, have a lot of heavy lead oil paint in them. The reason why I say this, it's that one of the things that I relate to Freud is that even though his paintings are challenging, they are beautiful as well. And one of the other things for me is using a lot of paint, thick paint, is, is expensive. And it's a bit of a luxury. And Freud wasn't rich in the beginning of his career. Uh, his early paintings are a little thin. But he was a family that, that was rich in what you would call ca uh, cultural capital. His grandfather, <laughs> Grandpappy Ziggy, uh, Sigmund Freud, is, you know, one of the most famous um, psychologists that ever lived. And he more or less relates to probably in some way Lucian Freud's success as a painter. And Freud acknowledged that too. He, he sometimes felt uh, in some of his bios, they talk about that a little bit. Um, he acknowledged that the way that people saw him was a little bit because of the cultural capital he had with his uh, grandfather, Sigmund Freud. And it kind of dovetails nicely because some of Sigmund Freud's theories about psychology and looking deeper into things can reflect into Lucian Freud's paintings. The paintings are, they work on us in, in this anti-aesthetic. They, they don't struggle with being beautiful because they're not trying to be beautiful. Um, Freud's paintings are almost psychologically compelling. Uh, we're trying to figure out why someone would paint the figure that way. Is this how the model looked, or is this how Freud interpreted the model? So I think Freud's success is somewhat linked to the fact that <laughs> he could afford to paint. He could afford oil paint. Um, he had a studio. He had a little bit of money. He went to the right schools, but he also grew up in a rough neighborhood, and um, in a couple of his bios, there's this uh, discussion about him related to some to gangster culture, you know, to the gangsters of the 40s and 50s, and that they actually enforced some deals that people didn't want to pay for his paintings and things like that. In his own bio, uh, he kind of talks a little bit, you know, about how it, the studio assistant <laughs> that wrote the bio basically talks about how Freud kind of used that cultural capital and also his sort of reputation as a slightly tough guy to make his career. And I think that also is part of these paintings. They, they slug you in the face. <laughs> There's also in the bio, it was pretty funny, a couple of things about the fact that he was a bit of a sexual animal and uh, he, you know, would have models come over sometimes in the middle of the day and, um, and then a girlfriend would come in and he'd go into the next room and they'd hear him um, doing his thing, you know. Um, there's also in, in some of the bios some discussion about the fact that he really pushed at the last part of his life. And that was one of the most productive phases of his life in terms of his painting. And he really pushed himself because he knew that that was the last time he was going to paint. There's even a little anecdote about when he was a kid, uh, you know, he, it was effortless for him, but when in the seventies, he kept going to his doctor and saying, yeah, I just don't feel like I used to. And the doctor would have to say, Lucian, you're, you're an old guy. That's what happens when you feel old. 